Look for these titles in bookstores this coming week and watch for many of the authors in the near future on Book TV on C-SPAN 2. And now on Book TV, we want to introduce you to an author. His name is Mike Purdy. Mr. Purdy, what do you do for a living? So I'm a presidential historian. I do uh, writing on my website, presidentialhistory.com. Um, I do writing for uh, interviews for a lot of media on the intersection of presidential history and politics. Are you a classically trained historian? I am not, no. Uh, it's something that's been a passion my whole life. And um, so it's been fun to do that writing now and uh, to be able to actually publish a book. And we want to talk to you about that book, which is 101 Presidential Insults. Where did the concept come from? concept comes from many, many years ago, probably 30 years ago in my reading and research, I started to notice the relationship between these 44 men who have served as president, uh, sometimes good relationships, sometimes really bad, sometimes they started out good and it went sour. And so I began collecting these quotations and then I started thinking about the political environment that we live in today. And I thought, you know, this would be timely to demonstrate the fact that these quotes and these uh, snipes by these men have been around since the founding of our country. A lot of these guys did not get along, did they? They did not. And sometimes they got along and then they didn't. So, I mean, I think one of the classic, of course, is John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, who early part of their uh, careers were great friends, collaborators. Uh, they had a big falling out as they found themselves in different uh, political parties. Um, and then about a dozen years before their death, Adams writes this wonderful, heartwarming letter to Jefferson. And he says, you and I ought not to die before we have explained ourselves to each other. And I always think that's such a, a good statement that uh, we could learn from today. Uh, how do we explain ourselves to one another in this political environment? And you have a quote here from Thomas Jefferson talking about John Adams, a mind soured yet seeking for popularity and eaten to a honeycomb with ambition, yet weak, confused, uninformed, and ignorant. Where did you find that? Well, the, the interesting thing about that quote is it was just months after Adams was elected president and Jefferson was elected vice president. And so they didn't have a very good relationship with one another there. <laughs> and did that affect that administration? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because, you know, if you just imagine today if we had a president and a vice president from different political parties that's going to totally shape the, the environment. It often seems, at, at least from your book, that presidents who ran against each other or followed each other had a particularly bitter relationship. Absolutely. I think that's very well said. I mean, you can look at 1912, which probably prior to 2016 was the most bitter vitriolic campaign we've ever seen. And so you had incumbent William Howard Taft uh, trying to defend the White House. Uh, Theodore Roosevelt, who bolted the Republican Party to the Bull Moose Party, he's running. And then Democrat Woodrow Wilson. And it was vicious, um, especially Roosevelt was quite creative with uh, the things he lobbed uh, against Taft. Uh, but Wilson got into the fray and, and Taft fought back as well. One of the things that I learned from the book is there's uh, a lot of quotes that we hear or read about uh, that these presidents have said about one another, but that you can't find them anywhere. So one of them was in 1912, it's reputed that Theodore Roosevelt uh, said that Taft had the brains of a guinea pig. And so it's a great memorable line, but it's nowhere to be found, at least that I could not find. So here you have Theodore Roosevelt talking about William Howard Taft as a fathead. Yes. Where did you find that? Where did I find that? I think that was in a newspaper clipping um, from the from uh, May of 1912, I want to say, and both uh, Taft and Roosevelt were making swings through Ohio, and the newspapers were reporting on what they said. You used a lot of quotes from Richard Nixon in his conversations with Monica Crowley. Yes, yes, right. And I think that's when this was after his presidency, so Nixon is a little bit more unfiltered, perhaps, or at least it's coming out, and we're getting uh, a window into some of his thinking, some of his mind. One of the more unusual relationships, Mr. Purdy, is uh, Jimmy Carter and Gerald Ford. Very bitter campaign in 1976. Oh, yes. It was incredibly bitter. They hated one another, um, and yet when they 
Both went to Anwar Sadat's funeral um, after their presidencies. Uh, they're spending a lot of time on the plane and realized they really liked each other. And of course, um, at uh, General Ford's funeral, Jimmy Carter spoke and said that probably no two presidents have enjoyed such a close relationship as they did. They, they became very, very warm in their friendship. Harry Truman is also quoted in here a couple of different times. Uh, he was willing to speak on the record, I guess. He spoke on the record. There's uh, so, some of what he said was uh, said contemporaneously. Um, you know, he unfiltered somewhat. And then a lot of it came out of the 1961 book, the oral history book by Merle Miller, where he would pontificate on earlier presidents. Um, and he would say, I think he said Franklin Pierce was a complete fizzle. Um, you know, so he, he, he definitely had choice things to say. Well, who was he talking about when he said this? This is Harry Truman again. He was the coldest man I ever met. He didn't give a damn personally for me or you or anyone else in the world as far as I could see. Sounds like that's FDR. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Why would he say that about his predecessor who well, appointed him VP? Well, you know, FDR and Truman had a not much of a relationship, quite frankly. Um, Truman was somewhat of a dark horse becoming vice president. And um, Truman, of course, was only vice president for a few months before Roosevelt died in April 1945. And so they, I think they met once uh, during uh, Roosevelt's fourth term, beginning of his fourth term. Who did the art on the front of your book? Art was done by an artist out of New York uh, called Victor Juhas. Um, Victor and I had a lot of fun uh, talking about concepts and what it should be, and I think he did just a delightful job uh, capturing some of these presidents who were some of the more vocal, outspoken ones, and uh, looking that they're quite angry. <laughs> so when we uh, go through this book, our world today, it's no different, is it? It is no different. I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, I learned from doing the book is that these insults have been around forever. I think the difference is that in the early days of the Republic, many of the quotes were um, written down in a private letter, in a diary, um, a private conversation that somebody then uh, reported on, whereas today, um, and increasingly so, it's been in books, in speeches, and now on Twitter, of course. And, and I think today, the level of uh, what we see in the public square is much more vitriolic and much more intense and more frequent than what we ever had before. But it, it's always been around because this is politics. Given that we are in a social media era, people are not writing the letters that they used to and yes. emails are more prevalent. Is it tougher for a historian? I think it's definitely tougher. I mean, because you, you don't get um, the kind of the unfiltered thinking of these men and uh, all you get is the the posturing that comes out on social media. And I think social media, along with other factors, is one of the reasons why we have such a polarized society. Not only social media, but I think there's a lot of fear in our society. And there's a lot of people who um, you know, are afraid of seeing uh, people who speak differently than they do, who look differently than they do, who worship differently than they do. And um, so all these factors combined and, and the speed of our, um, our news cycle just uh, continues to escalate things. Prior to developing yourself as a presidential historian, what kind of work were you doing? So I worked for 30 plus years as a contracting manager for uh, state and local governments in Washington state, uh, dealing with construction contracts and consultant contracts. Presidentialhistory.com, what will people find there? They'll find my blog, where I include lots of interesting things. The most recent one, I did a guest post. This was the first time I did a guest post uh, from someone from the Andrew Johnson National Historic Site, and she tells the story of how they found some new records of Andrew Johnson, which, so, you know, these things are hiding in people's attics and uh, in, in museums and all. And so I've got a blog there. I have a couple of uh, videos that uh, recreate what it would look like if uh, modern day TV newscaster was reporting on some key event in presidential history. Uh, there's a lot of resources on there in terms of links to uh, uh, books, uh, presidential sites, things like that. So when you look over your shoulder at that building over there, what are your thoughts? 
Well, I think about John Adams' uh, statement when he writes to uh, Abigail and he says, and you know, so he lived in the White House for five months only, and he says, you know, may, may none but honest and wise men ever live under this roof or rule under this roof. And um, so I think about that and I think about the long tradition that we have in this country of the presidency. Here's the book. It's called 101 Presidential Insults, What They Really Thought About Each Other and What It Means to Us. The author is Mike Purdy.